Okay, guys, so as we were talking about earlier um, and last week, uh, we're going to have a recap on last week's uh, pressure, control, leg extension, leg flexion, uh, and how it affects the ski and how, how we work with it. I had some really good feedback over the last week. Um, a lot of people uh, wrote in. We ended up having quite a few telephone calls with different people. Um, and, and it was good. It was, it was really, it was a bit of an eye-opener because when we do these talks, obviously, it's us talking out and quite often, you know, we try and cover all bases, but we don't get enough time, you know, within within the quick 30 minutes to, to do a recap and then talk in, in great extent about the subject we're on. Um, but we, we have, but the great thing about talking to people that get involved in the chat is that they, they bring up other points, points that we don't cover. Um, and quite often we get some pretty smart skiers writing in, you know, coaches, recreational skiers, but that, but that really think about the sport. Um, and I had, you know, a couple of good, really, really constructive half an hour phone calls with a few different people uh, this week. So I'm going to go over that as a bit of a recap on last week's session. Um, hope everyone's had a good week. Um, here in Verbier, the weather's been sort of mixed, but mainly sunny. Um, you know, the snow line's getting higher up, and then there's due to be some more snow coming sort of later uh, after the weekend. So fingers crossed we get a little bit more skiing out of that. Um, and obviously things are changing slowly. So the last thing... You know, we were hearing rumours about, you know, possible openings of some of the, the ski areas, some of the glaciers, um, when they get the ski lifts running in Switzerland, which should hopefully be, you know, sometime in June. But, we, you know, we, there's no definite information on that yet. But, but quite exciting stuff. We'll come to that at the end of the talk. Um, and obviously the main subject today is talking about one of the most important things, you know, to do with skiing, you know, whether it's to do with uh, protecting yourself and keeping yourself in good balance or, or really extending your performance levels. It's about core stabilization and holding that stability whilst you're going through the motions of skiing. So we're going to talk a little bit about some strengthening exercises for your core. And I'm sure most of you watching may already know and there may be a couple of new ones there for you. But we're going to more talk about the idea and, and show some video about what goes on and what you should be trying to think about with your core activation during the activity while you're in motion. It's a, it's a very different subject to someone saying, I can do a five minute plank. Uh, to someone sort of, you know, being able to activate their core whilst their legs are flexing and extending and their arms are trying to remain in balance and they're, they're skiing over, you know, moguls or variable terrain. That, that, that's a very different subject um, at hand and, and it's a bit of a different skill. Just to go over last week, so I'm just going to, just to bring up the notes from last week's uh, talk. Um, on a, my, one of the first people I spoke to um, was uh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Pollock, who's a skier, I think up at Castleford. Uh, and he's getting, um, uh, you know, he's part of a club up there and they've got great coaches at these, at these indoor snow domes, as we know. Um, and he brought up a point last week about the, um, the inside leg. And it was a really, really interesting point in stuff. We also coach here when we're talking to some people. And there's quite a lot of ways to get a point across. And what Jonathan's point, which he got across, which was excellent. And, and he made another point for, for perhaps skiers, you know, for, for a variety of different levels. But, you know, it's not just about sort of putting pressure on the outside ski by thinking of just the outside ski. He put in a really good point that you can also look at it from the point of view of releasing pressure off the inside ski. It gets the same sort of uh, approach to getting pressure against the outside ski. And as you go through your turns, you know, skis are like scales. You know, one's always going to um, get heavier, one's going to get lighter as you go through it. Um, but there's ways of playing around with that. So thanks for the phone call, Jonathan. I hope you guys up at Castleford get back on the, the snow as soon as you can and, and get skiing up there. Um, but we've uh, obviously we've run courses up there. We know it's a great venue, um, and you've got some great you've got some great coaching staff up there as well. Um, another person who I had a really good chat with again, and, and this sort of brings in a point. We've had a lot of people asking what are the difference is in the skis uh, that are here. You know, and then obviously there's free ride skis, there's race skis, there's um, there's all mountain skis, and there's touring skis. Um, so. Uh, Jonathan, uh, sorry, John Greenwood, uh, sorry, John, yeah, John Greenwood from Silksworth Ski Slope. Um, that's a dry slope up in Sunderland, uh, and we've skied there a few times. It's a, it's a great slope. So if, you ever, if you've ever skied on dry ski slope, and I know a lot of us as coaching uh, staff in, in the academy, and loads of, you know, instru British instructors, loads of us learn to ski uh, on dry ski slope. Um, I learned to ski at Hemel dry ski slope. Uh, I know Rob is putting in some questions and answering there was skiing up at Rochdale. And there's so much that can be learned at these venues. Uh, but John, uh, John's a, you know, the, the, a coach at the slope running that, that, that area. And he was making a really good point about what we focused on in our talk 
was kind of like the perception of how you think of a GS ski with a lot of camber in it and how you'd, you'd think to bend that ski in reverse camber. And as John said on, on our telephone call, you know, and looking at the other skis on the shelf, they all differ in the amount of sort of load of that camber they get put in them. And, you know, some of the skis here have got three different types of uh, radius in them, you know, where you've got a, um, a, a shorter radius, turn radius in the middle of the ski, and then the, the, the two radiuses on the, the, the front and back create a completely different turn radius. But John's point was really good, you know, and, it, and his was, you know, the, the, the modern day skis, people's conception doesn't always have to be about thinking about bending that ski in full, you know, reverse camber, trying to get it bent up at the start of the turn so you get that turn shape. The reality of it is a lot of skis that people ski on, a lot of consumers are going to be skiing on skis um, that they don't need to be sort of uh, putting that aggression into it. So it's a really good point we want to get across that the way that you work and you play with this is that it has a complete variety of different elements and different ranges and pressures of, of the leg extension you might be putting in with your new your new turn. So so let's bear that in mind. We can take a bit uh, from what Jonathan was talking about with skis up at Castleford. You know, some people get a great pressure and they get used to it and they can take that very far in their skiing by simply releasing the inside leg. And you look at some athletes, some really high performing skiers, huge amount of how they get the angles where the hips almost touch in the snow is actually a lot to do with the inside leg flex, taking that flexion of the inside leg to a max. So that's a, a really big thing to try and put across to everyone listening. Um, and then obviously on John's point from Silksworth, um, again, thanks John. Uh, John uh, is one of the people that asked about these talks that we do. And I wanna get that point across you know, now to people because um, we've already sort of started to put together our UK tour in October. I know Rob's working hard in the background contacting centers. Uh, we're gonna be going to Silksworth now as a, as a result of talking to, to John on the phone. And as we always encourage, we want to try and make these talks as interactive as possible and get people involved. Um, so from that point of view, from anyone watching this, and we know there's a lot of instructors that watch it and a lot of the UK, especially the UK industry sort of seem to be watching it. Let us know, you know, write into Rob, you can do it through the chat here. But if anyone wants us to go to one of their venues, whether it's a dry ski slope, an indoor snow dome, a bit like Chelsea Ski with the revolving carpet, we've done talks there and a great audience of people. Ski shops like the guys up at Norfolk and, and you know many, many shops around the UK, uh, the Cra Craigdon guys, you, you, they bring in a great crowd and the talks, generally speaking, it's not just about us bleating out you know, our, our opinion of it, it's really about getting everyone's ideas together, which is usually what we find as coaches makes the, sort of, uh, makes the whole experience better and, and more ideas come to the table. Um, so thank you guys um, for getting in touch. One other person I want to thank um, is a uh, friend of Rob's actually from Rochdale um, who wrote in, in fact you can, you can look at it, I'll show you it um, on the screen. Um, ben Bate, uh, if you look on the, the web page here, um, and we obviously we encourage people to, to write in, um, you'll see here Ben's got a great exercise he's putting on to the talks. Um, He's gone to the effort, very kind of him, of making a video, um, and it's a video to do with um, stabilization, you know, flexibility and mobility, but um, yeah, I can kind of show you what it is here, but it's, it links in very much to what we were talking about um, last week with the, with the leg extension and trying to work it, but he's, he's talking about a great exercise where you can really feel activation here uh, and, and the need for core stability when you're making a lateral movement. But what I'll do is I'll let you guys watch that in your own time. It's a really nice four minute video. Uh, the video contains really specific feedback. It also talks about the three points of the foot that you wanna get activated. You'll notice here, switching on the neurology, he's taking his, uh, his, his footwear off. He's taking his socks and feet off to get those three points of the foot where all obviously your nerve endings are at, which really tunes in the balance. So um, great exercise there from Ben. Um, Reach workplace well-being. You just just have a look at it on our on our uh, Instagram page hashtag Ski Technique Lab, and, and you'll see what he's doing there. So so we've seen some really good things come through um, from that from last week. Just to go over the skis um, and kind of make the obvious difference in terms of how how John up at Silksworth is talking about um, skis and about how they come with a uh, a certain uh, camber built into them. If I put these skis together, and you should be able to see. Um, but when I put the tip and tail of the ski together, there is a huge gap in the middle. And me and John were calling this gap on the telephone called the void. Um, but those skis there, when I hold the tip and tail together, 
uh, that's a gap that that's going to take pressure to bend that ski so i want to get that ski to make an arc shape it isn't just going to do it itself when you put it on the floor you've got to put a bit of work into that ski but the work you put in when you have got that kind of um camber built into the ski it springs you back into the turn it gives you energy and that's where you'll see racers accelerating through the turn so that's one type of um uh you know side cut we wanted to show you guys and the difference here when we look at a really nice ski it's been a popular one for us and the guys that ski with us on our courses it's the deacon uh, the deacon comes um, with a different radius obviously built into it the three radius and you can see the difference straight away when you put the tip and toe of the ski together that is not the same kind of construction as the World Cup race ski that you just saw. Um, on here, uh, there's hardly a gap. But the, what happens here when you look really carefully, um, and I'll try and show you this, guys. I'll bring the ski up to the camera a little bit closer. Um, so as we go through here, I just wanna make sure you can actually see it. I'll put the ski up here. In the middle, um, you've got, when the tip and tail sort of aim to touch, you've actually got other side cuts that come in. The skis separate towards the rear um, here and the touching point is there where my hand is okay so you're going to find that these skis really differ in the way that these side cuts work it's quite difficult to show you that so what you want to do if you really want to read up on it and, and get your sort of uh, your knowledge there about how the skis have changed from race skis to our modern day kind of like the vocal deacon that we see there um, they have different radius, like you know, free radius system now that's built into the vocal skis. It's fantastic because it means you can really vary your turns. Um, and, and again, you know, from what uh, Jonathan was talking about, it, it, it doesn't have to be an expert skier to go and get the most out of the skis. The skis have been designed now to, to help a greater range of people alter their turn shape and get more out of their skiing. Um, we're just going to recap on a couple of bits to do with, uh, to do with what we did last week. The, um, the exercises. The, the leg extension exercises to recap on. We mentioned one thing, and I'll just try and show you this uh, without hopefully the bands breaking. Um, the, 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 uh, Steph, Stephanie of uh, Physio Verbier let me these. I'm not sure they're gonna be strong enough, but just to show you in a, in a basic form, when you get the right type of TheraBand with the right type of strength, um, what you can do with your leg extension, and we were talking about this last week, we were looking at exercises on which to, to get this outside leg working. And with the resistance here that I'm pulling through, um, I'm gonna take this to its limit here, down to go real, obviously. But what you can see, using the TheraBand, you've got a resistance that you can actively, actively work the, the outside leg against, okay? So it's not just doing it in thin air, you're more replicating the forces that go on in skiing. Um, so that was one exercise that you know we, we'd say to people to do, Make sure you've got something like a cushion on a sofa to fall against. That, that's quite important, you know. So that, that type of exercise uh, is very effective. Try it on both sides. The other thing that we encourage people to think about, and this is something we, we get people to be aware of when they, they come on a ski course, is that there's usually, and, and this is most people, I would say, that come out and ski with us, there's usually a difference between the power uh, the power, the strength, the you know, stability, balance, whatever it is, there's usually a difference between left and right with most people. Um, and I think most people, when they think about things, and this is just something to put at you, you, you know, leg press. Um, if you're ever going to use a leg press machine, obviously think about it in, in a very controlled manner, not just trying to slam out weight, but really working your way through the whole movement. Not really aiming from a skier's perspective to lock the leg out fully. You want to go to about 80, 90% of your leg length but keep it in a really controlled manner and maybe think of less weight than you're normally used to. But the real thing to think about um, to work on if you're doing leg presses or, or just single legs, uh, leg press, leg squat at home, is, is exercising each leg separately and trying to feel if you can see a difference between left and right. And we know most people that we sent off to work on this, whether you've got equipment at home, whether you kind of know already that one leg is weaker than the other, which I'm sure a few of you would do, there's a way of tuning it up and, and making the strength equalize just by creating awareness in the first place. So the awareness, if it's placed there, you will naturally find yourself giving a little bit more attention to the weaker leg. So, so that's one other thing that we were talking about from last week. Um, the third thing we were talking about, and um, a few people were practicing this, we were talking about it with people on, online and over phone calls, and then even over a, a few video calls that we did this week, is just putting a pillow down the side of the hip here and allowing yourself 
to get that feeling of difference between simply sort of falling against the wall and you can almost feel the sort of the very the very slow the very non-dynamic way that your body's moving towards that and then when you switch on leg extension you can see the difference straight away and you can take a bit more of a risk to move further away from the wall but that's a very very big difference when you're looking at the floating motion and many people out there ski you know they, they don't realize it till sometimes they've come on a ski course or or found their ideal instructor that's taught them that, that things can change dramatically when you get these legs working and pumping so that's just a, a very basic thing to practice at home here just floating against the wall and the speed of it and then looking at it when you add dynamics and thinking about a leg extension. So left leg, a bit of power coming from it, it's a completely different movement. You want to expand on that, obviously, move yourself further away from the wall. Don't take too much of a risk, and remember this is something that you're, you're hitting against the hard wall, so be, be cautious. And that pillow is saving my impact there against the wall, but a little bit further away, and you can see you can actually practice the dynamics. Now linked in to week four, when we talked about angles in the body, angulation, this will actually help that you know so if you're working on dynamic exercises in both directions again you're going to feel one side that will be needing a little bit more help and attention than the other um, so from the point of view of um, how we we build that that's one thing that we've seen over the week that people have found that they got results with uh, they worked on it with us over the chat and this is why we say the interaction is great when you guys write in we can guide you through a few of these exercises um, so that's the kind of the, 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 the gist of the recap on what last week's uh, talk was. I'm just looking at the clock there, we, you know, we're just halfway through this week's talk. And as we said, this week's is about um, core stability, uh, core sort of activation, but keeping it active whilst you're moving. So this week's subject is, is, is hugely important in skiing terms because um, you could be doing so much of other elements of skiing correct or technically correct. But if you don't have your core switched on and activated, um, you've got to remember that all the forces in the sport of skiing, they all come into the middle of the body. And uh, we've seen so many times when someone's made a great steering action or, or made a perfect sort of timing of flexion and extension, but because the core, as they were going through the motion of skiing, wasn't activated, the body collapsed. You know, the body took this shock, this pressure shock, and it folded. Now, I'm sure a, a lot of you guys at home, if you visualize, and you can sort of do this, you can get yourself into that mode, especially now because when you can't actually ski, there's way more visualization, people dreaming about skiing going on. Try and get into your head that kind of ski run, whether it's a, an off-piste run that may have you know, variables in it and rollers and things that you don't necessarily plan for, um, or a mogul run. You know, if those of you that out there that ski moguls, you know how much you know, the core is so essential when you're taking and skiing through those type of pressure changes. Uh, but even calming on piece, you know, when you're making your turns and skiing on piece, that force and pressure that builds up as you're going through a turn, you've got to know that that core's activated so you can hold the resistance and then get your legs back out for the next turn into the next direction. So, so we know this is of paramount importance and probably one of the most important subjects to think about in your skiing technique. Um, I'm going to look at some, I'm going to show you first of all some, some video uh, from. Uh, I'll bring it up from you. There's, there's some stuff here of Andy Bennett skiing, moguls. There's some stuff of Rob uh, Stanford uh, doing some variable ski run. And I'll bring the camera closer to the TV screen so it's a little bit easier um, for you guys to work on. Um, I had a random bit of good luck this week. I actually was clearing out, as you get so much um, COVID time on your hands, I'm sort of clearing out the garage that I haven't cleared out in about sort of 10 years and found a tripod. So a little bit more... I wouldn't say professional, it's still very amateur, but we've sort of got a little bit more uh, um, uh, ability to sort of control the camera here. So, so hopefully you guys can see that screen um, and I'll try and show you um, on that screen what, um, what it is we're, we're looking for. I'm going to go in a tiny bit closer. Um, so just on there, you can see um, Rob's, Rob making his turns. I'm going to show you some skiing as we go through this um, and I'll sort of take it through frame by frame, but... This is skiing in, I would say, quite flat light. Um, and I want you to watch uh, Rob's legs here because it'll be showing you the difference between the upper body and how the legs work. Um, so coming through this run, you can see um, quite quickly that it's a run that really pulls in a lot of activation here. Just coming through again here, just watch the legs work, pushing back out through it. Every time pressure comes up through the skis, 
The legs are obviously doing work to absorb, but every time those skis are coming in contact with pressure changes, um, you've got to be the skier that's got the confidence to run through that, hold that movement in the legs, flexion, extension, but in all that movement, we've got to know that the core can handle the pressure. So Rob's legs let there when he's skiing, they look like springs, um, partly because he's making really good flexion and extension movements, so let's say week five type of topic, but also um, this area of the body is working continually and working quite um, aggressively, you could say, to hold that stability. Um, and it isn't just about the same aspect, and this is what we want to get people thinking about. This is not the sort of the idea that you can do a five minute plank, therefore you can go out and ski variable terrain that well. Um, this is really about the idea that you've got to get used to making your core almost work without thinking about it. So when you engage your core, when you think about that core activation, and you're about to ski down your 30 second, even a one minute run, but realistically, the, the, the duration of most ski runs are not actually as long as you think they are. And to hold that stability, um, a lot of it can be more about rehearsal. All of you guys at home, you, you, you get given, you know, you, you, without even going to a gym, you have a certain amount of core strength anyway. You, you'd have to have just to get out of bed in the morning, walk around the house and do whatever, even if you do minimal exercise. Um, but sometimes, you know, we, we talk through with people. I'm going to just show you another bit of um, footage here, guys. So, so that was Rob skiing through some variable terrain. I'm going to show you um, a skier on this as we come through. So great work there, showing the absorption. Obviously, when people come out and ski, we get the work going here. Here's Andy Bennett. So he's an ex, you know, ex British team um, uh, freestyle skier, and he's been a member of the academy for many years. And Andy um, now coaches a British um, uh, part of the British freestyle team coaching setup. Uh, but watch his legs work as he goes through the bumps. The thing to watch for in the upper body is the stability of it and the difference between the legs pushing out, coming up. Everything here is stabilised with the upper body, but the legs are doing all that work to stay in balance. Again, you couldn't ski a line of moguls like that with that much direct direct sort of force without the core being activated. Um, so that's a really big thing to take on board for many skiers. I'm going to show you a recreational skier coming down in this, um, in this run and somebody that, that takes the mogul here, just watching the ski come through, and you can see, you know, good turns being made, holding a good line, but when the core isn't activated, and I'm sure a lot of you guys might have come across this or, or, or felt this type of thing happen, you know, this is just skiing a variable run of a few moguls, but imagine if the slope gets steeper, Imagine if the speeds get higher. Um, the first thing to go here could, could be the core. And that can be a, the case in many aspects of skiing, as we spoke about earlier in this, in this lecture. So just watching that come through here, as soon as the core goes, everything else goes out of balance. But if that was switched on and working for him, the outcome of that turn could have been quite a lot different. So just something to think about, guys, is, is the activation of it. Now, we quite often, um, talk to people about the idea that you do need to build strength. And, and we'll, we'll whiz through really quickly um, the strength aspect. So I'll just put this, this camera in a position where you can see the mat on the floor. And it's, we're not going to go into great detail because, you know, me showing you this, you're much better off watching um, fitness professionals online. Fitness professionals online will be able to show you uh, the exercises in a, in, a much, um, in a much more direct manner. And they're obviously the pros at this. Uh, but we're going to just show you some basic exercises with the core. Um, so, you know, one thing you can do just to think about it is, is the thing we spoke about earlier. It's just a plank, okay? So everyone knows it. It's very basic. But if you don't, uh, just an image of a plank. You know, if you're looking at it at home, here's the position in the body. You want to try and keep the body straight. And as we said earlier, people can go on for doing these for a vast amount of time. Um, in skiing terms, you know, we also want to think about this, this lateral movement that we make when we're skiing. So you can think about um, planks where you're looking at the body being held and you can do some planks where you literally lift up here and straighten and try to hold that position there. That alone is going to keep it active. And if you think about working through it, you can try and make your movements as smooth as possible. You can look at activation here of just literally raising and lowering the hip. Again, they're good core work exercises, and they're things that will sort of build up quite a big sweat quite quickly. You can use other things here. Um, we'll, we'll post these guys, we'll actually go through these exercises, and we'll, we'll post with a video 
Um, but there's, there's other things you can do here. Uh, bring these sliders out. You know, we've used sliders in different weeks of this session. Um, but you can put your feet on these sliders and you can work here, just getting yourself in a position. And you can try and pull through. You can come out at angles and you can work your way around all sorts of movements on that. There are more things you can do, again, laterally with your legs, where you're in this position, and you can toe tap outside to side. If you want to get really active with it, you can work on some diagonal work there as well. So that program and the list will put together about eight exercises uh, that you guys can work on over the course of the next week. And we'll get you there by just showing you basically um, things that will develop and improve with that with your core. The, the last, the part we want to talk to you about, I'm going to bring the, the screen back up so you can see the video camera. Let's have a look. So just on this point here, um, looking at the skiers coming through, we know we need to activate the core. We know that some people that can work through these exercises can be great at the core exercises and the planks and different things that will help you develop. But when it comes to us saying to them, okay, let's take you through your exercises, let's put it in motion, now ski this pitch. And the pitch is something that, if they're completely comfortable with it, and they haven't got to think about many other things, they can sometimes keep that core activated. But one of the things we often come across with many skiers is that when we ask them and talk to them about the, the, the how long did you keep your core activated and stable for, whilst you were skiing. Quite often people will realize that once they started their run and their brain went to looking ahead at that bit of snow over there, when the gradient was about to change, when they got to a point where you know, they, they got the un unexpected wobble off their skis, then they had to regain balance. Then they had to think about their pole plant because the pole plant was slowing down, the brain wasn't thinking about it. Then the radius of this turn changed, then the pitch of the, the run changed, then the slope got narrower. By the time all this information is fed back in, quite, it's quite easy to think, oh my God, I've done like a couple of weeks of core work in the gym, I've done my, my yoga, I've done my Pilates, I've done everything I can do to develop core strength. But it's about the stability of your core whilst you're active, whilst you're in motion. And that is a different game. Now, something that we actually got a lot of success with people uh, with over the, the autumn tour, um, we were saying to people when we were doing the tour, at the end of the night, when we were talking about this as like, you know, point number six out of a few of these, uh, these fundamental points, we were saying, why don't you just try activating your core? And this is an interesting one. So any of you guys are going out today and you've got to go and make a drive or a trip or a journey somewhere. Um, and I'll give you another thing to think about. So you don't have to just be doing something like this. You could actually be doing something, you know, in a ski position, like jumping side to side and using that as your exercise. Um, and that's something we're going to be focused on next week, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So with that idea, we say to people sometimes, when you're in this position and you get in your car, and every day when you get in your car, if someone said to you, right, activate your core, your body would probably raise by about two centimeters. You'd feel the band around the middle of the body switch on, and you'd actually feel quite comfortable. You would be supporting your lumbar. So if you're a driver that just drives your car around anyway, in, in a relaxed position, slumped, over time, and the same sitting at a desk in the office, if you can think about core activation whilst you're in these situations of sitting, you are going to protect your lumbar. And what you don't want, this is another sort of a side sort of sideline to what we're talking about, but two or three weeks, four weeks continue in an office in a regime where you're sitting in a chair. If you're doing that sitting with core activation, when you go away on your ski holiday, you're not going to be one of these people that's feeling like tight in the lumbar, tight in the back. Okay, so that's just one good reason. But the test and the thing that the try at home sort of exercise or the try in your car exercise, activate your core and then try and drive. So if you think about all the elements of driving, you've got to push on the clutch, you press on the accelerator, you press on the brake. You may change gear or you may, may change it into different things in, in your manual or, or in your automatic, it's obviously set. But in addition to that, you're moving your arms. You're using your arms, you know, think of it as pole plying, whatever you want to do, you're moving your arms left and right. And then you look in your rear view mirror. And sort of relate that to the idea of when you're skiing, you're looking ahead at terrain change or whatever's going on. And then you put it out the car park or looking in the rear, looking in your side mirror. And then you're trying to reverse, you're trying to do a technical maneuver, then you're looking again to see if cars are coming, you're pulling out into a main road, and then it gets really hectic. And then it gets busy because there's lots going on. See how long 
you can activate your core or keep your your core um, you know your, your core mobile and active and, and stabilizing the whole of the middle of your body whilst you're making extension movements flexion movements with your legs whilst you're using your arms and whilst your brain is going elsewhere and that's the key to this point as an exercise so we we give people this idea to think about and, and this is what we want you to go away with today because we know that a lot of you guys will come in um, you know like like Ben did with with a great exercise made a video chucked it up on hashtag uh, ski technique lab we want people now to go and try it and then come back and give us feedback it's really interesting because I've done it myself and in fact when I was on the tour with Rob in October we actually did it I, I actually I could not do it I came out with a spiel at a talk because we thought, actually, this, is, this isn't a bad idea. This, this is very, very similar. And it took me about three venues, as in like three different days of driving, to get used to activating the core for a whole drive until I wasn't thinking about it. And, and that's the key to this, guys, is getting the ability to try to hold that core whilst you're doing something else. So it becomes like a learned thing, not something that you have to consciously think about, but something that's subconscious and it just carries on. If you can get to that stage with dynamic core activation whilst you're moving other parts of your body, whilst your body's moving down the hill, whilst the terrain's changing, you're gonna be developing your skiing in such a different way. Your learning curve will go through the roof. You'll absorb all the other elements that you get in and, and your consistency, as in less breaks in the body, less bum sticking out back seat, so much more consistency will move your skiing on and it'll keep you safe as well. So, so work on that as a stay at home exercise this week. Not just on the, the exercises which, you know, if you go online right now and just type in uh, core exercises skiing, you're going to get hundreds of great core exercises. So kind of, you know, that's an easy thing to show you. You can look at that online and obviously we've just shown you a couple of basics. But the real key to this is, is the duration. You know, it's holding that stability whilst you're actively moving down the hill. That's a different subject. So practice that at home as well as developing your core strength as well. Uh, and let's see where we get to by next week. If, um, if you haven't got the ability to drive in a car, um, you know, what you can do is just look at basic jumping side to side exercises. I'll just put the camera back just so it's in a more of a, a middle of the room position. Um, but just looking at, um, at the basics of this, you know, we've done this a lot. And we, we've been working, you know, for many, many years. We work with skiers on a, on a dry land training regime. Because as, as you know, it's why we're doing the webinars, obviously, there's a lot of content for skiing uh, that isn't on snow that develops your skiing technique. But if you're not driving a car, just think about it like this. We, we've seen people, 50 skiers in a room, in a gym, where we, we, we've taken them into, and we do a lot of this in our summer ski courses. Um, and those of you who are out this summer skiing with George and Fee, you'd have, you'd have gone through the process in the garage at the Mont Rev works for all the different regimes of jumping and developing your dynamics as you're doing it. But we've seen people, when we set up to say, right, jump side to side, we've given them zero information, and they go from jumping side to side, and they're going across, and, and you can already see their body breaking. Then you raise their awareness and say, right, just think about doing this, but activate your core before you're doing it. And you can see them spring in, a, in such a different manner because they're not having to recover that. And it's that part there, when the body breaks at the middle, the recovery process for that, it takes up split seconds and, and you have to make micro corrections. We spoke about micro corrections way earlier on in these webinars and this is one of the key areas that people have to keep making corrections because if you're looking at it sideways, their core breaks, you know, the center of their mass, it, it sticks out where they don't want it, you know, and it makes it even more vulnerable because you're in this position and you take a shock through the skis, you get bent into an even more awkward position. So just think about that. We're going to be developing this in next week's webinar anyway, which is a, a sequence of dynamic exercises, jumping side to side, de developing your dynamics, developing your flexion. Just to give you a rough idea, you know, we want you to work on this this week and to go through jumping side to side. You know, think of that as, as activation of your core, a really basic level. Don't push it. Don't try and go crazy, get in huge distances. Just use it as a means of jumping side to side, quite passively, but switch it on your core. But just to give you an idea about next week, so next week we will have a recap on the core. Um, but when we give people the exercise of simply, really basically jumping side to side, we see all sorts of things happening where people can go from left to right, take off in a position where we see their knees clanging together and land in an A-frame. Um, and we fixed people's A-frames and, and asymmetric stances in their skiing 
literally in Oslo exercises because their awareness in, in some respects, because there's less other things going on, less distractions, they can really hone in and focus on it. So guys, that, that's a, a bit of an explanation about how we see um, the, the importance of, of a, a very good activated core that isn't just a static activation in core exercises, but is more of a dynamic mobile activation whilst you're moving. It's a very uh, different thing to think about and look at, but we believe if you got your head around it and just started working very slowly at home, it'll be a big benefit to your skin. And do you know what? It'll be a big benefit to your day-to-day -day anyway. It'll look after the middle of your body and your lumbar. Um, and as the recap goes, I hope you guys have got a little bit from the TheraBand. Obviously, with these things, be careful. You know, put a sofa cushion down if it was to break. I was expecting it to break today. It, it probably wasn't strong enough for you to do, but um, just have a think about that. Cushion down the side of the hip as a recap, so easy to do. And you can get so much, um, you know, your proprioception can build up so much in your, your keen aesthetic awareness, just seeing the differences between doing it to the left and doing it to the right. Um, we'll see you next week, guys, at uh, 10 o'clock. Um, just so you know, uh, Jordan uh, launched all of our 2021 dates. Um, we're confident we'll be skiing then, you know, fingers crossed we're going to be skiing then. Um, you know, we may even be skiing this summer, we don't know at the moment, but just to let you know, I know a few people have been asking, but, but rather than all the messages coming in about when are they, they going to be live, they're live now, they're online, and you, know, you can get in there and, um, and, and get involved and, and see what we're doing as the program for next year. Um, we'll see you next week, guys. Have a great week. Have a safe week. And, um, and yeah, get going with the exercises. Write in and give us the feedback. That's the biggest part of this. Get involved wherever you're at, whichever venue you're at or whichever ski club you're from or, or even as individuals, just get involved. And we'll see if we can help you as the week goes on. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great weekend.